Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, I will show you how to combine built-in material models in Abacus with the face field UEL to model fracture. For this purpose, I prepared a simple example. We have two different materials in the same plate with an initial notch. The right part is going to be modeled with the face field UEL, while the left is going to have a viscoplastic, a little bit harder, more rigid material. Here the challenges are we have to identify the, the face field element sets, reorder the original mesh, duplicate those elements which are actually about to be the UELs, then repeat the rest of the model, then redefine uh, in the assembly the, the original element sets. We will use the following viscoplastic material model, however we will assume that the strain rate has no dependence on time, just a linear one. Thus m is going to be equal to zero. Thus we will have the same material model as assumed. Uh, commonly. Now let's start developing our model. After opening the graphical user interface of Abacus, let's start a standard explicit model. Save our simulation with the name of sense as a single edge notched specimen. Let's start by creating a new part which is going to be a 2D planner part with the name of plate, approximative size 5. And let's start by creating these points. And let's finish at zero, zero. Click on the X, done, and we have our part. Let's divide this part into two sections by clicking on partition faces. Let's use these nodes to partition that section, and let's create another one where we will increase the density of the finite element mesh. By clicking escape and done, we are ready. Let's save this and now we can move to the second module, which is going to be the property module, where we will define our material models and assign those to element sets. Let's create first the material model for the UELs. In general, select the dependent variables. Let's add 16. Then a user material when we will add a very small number and that's it for the UELs. <clears throat> Let's create a second one which is going to be our Wisco plastic material model. We will add an elastic constant with the young modulus of 1000 and the Poisson's ratio of 0 0.3. We have to add 
a simple plastic criteria to show the viscoplastic material model what is going to be the four of the yield surface but this will not be active in this simulation the second sub-option for plasticity is going to be viscous here we will add material constants 0 0.01 1 for the exponent 0 for the time exponent and f is a variable which defines the ratio between simple plastic strains and viscoplastic strains 0 is for simple plasticity and 1 is for a viscoplasticity, the viscous effect. However, Abacus only uses numbers larger than 0 and smaller than 1, so we will add a very close number to 1 because now, at the very moment, we only want to model viscosity. Let's click OK. Let's start defining our sections. The first section will have the UELs, the second one the viscoplastic material model. Let's define our sets. The first set is going to be the right hand side. It is very important that the converter scripts, the converter script is going to recognize sets as UELs. It starts with the UEL and then we can type right. Let's select the three subparts um, click done, assign the first section and click OK. The second one is going to be named left as this name doesn't start with UEL. This will not be recognized as a UEL and it will not be replicated as a face fill element. Click done and assign the second section which has the viscoplastic material model. After clicking OK, we can save our model and we can move on to the next one, which is going to be the assembly. Here we will do nothing else, just add the plate into the assembly. We will create a few sets. Let's name a button highlight the two bottom edges, click done. Let's create a top, continue with shift, select the top edges, click done. Let's create a point which will act as a reference point. It will be very close to the top. Let's create a reference point here and let's define a set on the actual reference point. Now we are ready to move on to the next module, which is going to be the step module. Let's create a new step which is going to be a static general step. The increment is going to be fixed with 1000 increments. And the increment size is 10 on the power minus three. Click OK. Let's see what kind of output we would like to have. First and foremost, we can ask for the reaction forces and the displacement for all nodes. We can ask for the stress and the strain variables. However, keep in mind that the stresses are only available on the, the materials, on the elements which are using the built-in materials. Let's click OK, dismiss and save the model and then we can move to the next one which are going to be the interactions, where we will actually fix the, react, uh, the reference point with the top. For this, we will use a constraint, an equation, 
put 1 and minus 1 to the coefficients. First, we will select the top, then the reference point, and we will attach those two in the second in the direction of the second degree of freedom. Let's click OK, let's save the model and go to the load. We will fix the bottom. We will select the bottom set and we will fix the displacement in the y direction. We will do the same on the right side as we assume that it is symmetric. We will define a new set as we forgot it in the assembly. Click done, constrain the displacement in the x direction, and now we can add our load, which is going to be a concentrated force on the reference point. Select the reference point and the, the amplitude of this force is going to be 1 in the y direction. We will use a table to apply this force at time 0. We will have a 0 amplitude, however, 0 0.01 we will have all the forces already on the model at time equals to 1, we will have the same force all the way through. Let's click OK. Don't forget to select the table and finish by clicking OK. Now we are ready to move on to the next module, which is going to be the mesh. Go to the part option, let's define an initial mesh of 0.1 and let's densify our mesh by selecting a face, done, and size which is one tenth of the original mesh. Let's assign some mesh controls. We do not want uh, the mapping. Let's click OK. Element type. We will select plane strain elements as the face field element itself is a plane strain element. We don't want the reduced integration and click OK. Now we can actually mesh our part. And we are ready here. Let's save the model and go to job. Let's create a job. Continue and click OK. Let's write an input file. And then now we are ready to go to MATLAB to use the script to convert the original input file to the new UEL. In MATLAB, make sure that you have both MATLAB files in the same directory and that in the face field UEL directory you have the fortune file. Now here we only need to open the convert script. It is a pre-made script to save some time with the name of the input file and with the necessary material parameters for the converter script. Let's run this. We will see that it started to create a new input file with the, the concerning uh, Fortran file. Now we can return to Abacus to run all the simulations. In Abacus, create a new job with the source of an input file. Let's select the newly created input file. Click Continue in the General tab link the user subroutine, click OK, 
and now we can run the simulation After a few minutes, our job is ready. To visualize the results, click on the results. To get rid of the access, let's create a display group. Here we have two options in the elements. We can show all the elements in the mesh or only the UMAT elements. Let's start with the all element option. Go to solution dependent variable 14 to show how the actual fracture propagated. What we can see that it started at the notch as we expected, went along and then it branched as it couldn't penetrate the, the viscoplastic material model on the left side. Let's look at the displacement on the top. Click continue, type u.u2 Let's select unit model and in the node set, let's select the reference point. What we can see here is that after applying the pressure, the viscoplastic, viscoplastic deformation took place, then around the 0 0.4, 0.5 the deformation was enough to fracture the right hand side and then with a decreased rigidity the, the viscoplastic behavior continued and indeed if we go back to 400 we can see that the fracture just starts to initiate and then it starts to run along. Until approximately 0.5. To sum up, in this tutorial I have showed how to use built-in material models in Abacus with the UEL option to model fracture with the face field method. It is very important to keep in mind that this doesn't mean that we have combined face fields with an arbitrary material model. It has to be implemented in the actual UEL file if you want to use the fracture on the actual viscoplastic material model. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.